One of the most interesting and intriguing politicians in Pakistan is the country's former World Cup cricket winning captain and now a major opposition leader Imran Khan. In 2011-12 when he was leading million man marches, he was thought to be the France democracy. In 2013 many thought he would sweep the elections. In 2014 some thought he could even bring down the government. None of that happened. But Imran Khan remains very popular with Pakistan's young population and also with its urban citizens. Today, even though many believe his political fortunes could be sliding, they could easily quickly reverse and rise once again. Presently on a visit to India, Imran Khan is my guest tonight. Imran Khan, you come to India 48 hours after the two countries have announced a new comprehensive bilateral dialogue starting presumably in a month or two's time, and this follows secret talks in Bangkok between the two NSAs. As leader of, the Pakistan, of Pakistan's second most important party in voter share terms, how do you view this development? I think very positive. Both sides of the border um, should welcome it. Because, uh, you know, one thing we need in the subcontinent is peace between the two neighbors. And uh, with peace follows everything else, trade, prosperity, and above all, reduction in poverty. So um, it was quite uh, disconcerting for us when in the beginning uh, this sort of standoff took place. So now uh, things are looking good. So you welcome this development? Absolutely. You support it entirely? Absolutely. I've always, uh, like uh, I think majority of Pakistanis, we've always supported that the peace process should move forward. We should settle our disputes and, and then trade should open up. I'll tell you why I mm -hmm. ask this question, because today Shireen Mazari, who's perhaps one of your closest advisors in foreign affairs, has in fairly strong terms criticized this accord. She's asked for an explanation from the Prime Minister for why he signed it. He, she's asked for explanations about why Pakistan's interest in Kashmir is not given the same degree of attention as India's interest in terror, why assurances have been given to India about the Mumbai attacks, but nothing received about Samjhota. So she is very critical. No, she's the what she well first of all there are Shirin's views as well and I mean, Shirin is an expert in foreign policy but isn't but she me, your advisor she she is my spokesperson in information but she's not on foreign policy she's not an advisor on foreign policy but let me just make it clear uh, she might criticize aspects of the talk but no one criticizes the fact that the dialogue should resume and talk should resume okay then let me put it like this recently you said that what was holding up India-Pakistan relations was the fact that the two Prime Ministers were not showing leadership. Now, after this decision, do you believe they've shown leadership or do you still have reservations? Uh, well, let me qualify that. <clears throat> what do I mean by a leader? The, one of the greatest examples is Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela's greatness was that he rose above the fact that 27 years he spent in jail discrimination, apartheid, and he rose above for the future of South Africa and got the uh, different communities together, which we thought that they would, everyone thought there would be bloodshed there. And it's a statesman who thought of uh, the bigger goal. Now for me, Pakistan and India, the, what the leadership has to do is to talk about what is best for the future of the subcontinent. The best is peace. Why peace? Uh, and resolving our differences and having peace because it is the best way to reduce poverty in the subcontinent. Peace. Because it's trade and everyone knows the benefits of trade. So therefore, uh, when I say leadership, they lack leadership. I got the feeling that, um, you know, why have secret talks in Kathmandu? I'm, I'm talking about, I commented on Barka Dutt's book where she said there were, uh, there were secret talk and she indicated that perhaps Nawaz Shri was worried about Pakistan's establishment. Neither government has confirmed that, but it, there is no reason to dispute it either. But one reason why secret talks happen, whether it's in Kathmandu or in Bangkok more recently, is because A, it's away, away from the glare of the press, and B, it allows governments to reach an understanding without being tripped up by press coverage or opposition criticism. For instance, Shireen Mazari's criticism could certainly deflect Nawaz Sharif if others were to join what she's saying. You are applauding what he's done, but if more people like her start criticizing Nawaz, he could have second thoughts. That's why they do it in secret. It, it, kind of two different things. Number one, um, I, when I talk about leadership, you have secret talks, but in that specific 
uh, uh, comment with, with, uh, uh, the, the, in the, what she had said, uh, Barkadat, she mentioned that um, uh, perhaps uh, Narendra Modi was worried about his own uh, constituency, right-wing constituency, and Nawaz was worried about the establishment. My point is that leaders do not worry about these things. They get inspire people on board towards the greater vision, and the vision is peace in the subcontinent to, uh, to, to uh, eradicate poverty. Then let me ask you this. How do you view Narendra Modi today? Do you believe that he's serious and sincere about trying to resolve the problems with Pakistan? Do you believe he can seriously improve the relationship? Do you think he has it? To be honest with you, you know, I thought that just like Mr. Vajpayee, uh, he represented BJP. We were all scared when he came into power in Pakistan. We thought, you know, uh, it would, uh, the distance between the two countries would increase. But in fact, Mr. Vajpayee reached out to Pakistan. He paid a visit there. And everyone took everyone by surprise and actually started the peace process. Does Mr. Modi have the same capacity so, in your eyes? So uh, I, I was a bit disappointed. In the beginning, I thought that uh, Narendra Modi, Prime Minister, had this huge majority. And this was a great time to be a statesman. And from position he was in, it was to get the countries together. I thought there was, a, you know, I was a bit disappointed. But people change, they learn. Do you think he's changing? Do you think he's learning? Well, I think this is a positive move. Because for a while, we thought the distances wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't get closer. I mean, we thought we would just grow further apart. But there has, I mean, this uh, movement in the last few weeks, yes, it gives us hope. I know that you're hoping to meet him later this evening, shortly after this interview. What will you say to him in the context of the step he's taken with Nawaz Sharif? Uh, I mean, broadly speaking, I don't know what I'll say to him, but mainly that, you know, the future of the subcontinent lies in peace between the two countries. That's it. So let's resolve our differences, because the dividends of peace are enormous. Let me put it like this, the joint statement issued on Wednesday just 48 hours ago separates terror, which is India's main concern and the way it's treated, from all the other subjects. Terror will be discussed by the NSAs, but Kashmir, which is Pakistan's principal concern, has been packaged with all the other subjects to be handled by the foreign secretaries. How do you, as one of Pakistan's most important opposition leaders, view this differentiation in treatment? I think that uh, even if you put it in a different package, you cannot take away the importance of Kashmir because that really is the sticking point. Uh, as we say, it's the core issue. Sooner or later, it has to be resolved. And, uh, you know, if you read, uh, well, our ex-foreign minister, Khurshid Kusuri's book, I mean, in that book, he just spells out how close they came. I mean, how close the, peace pro uh, the, 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 the process of resolving the Kash Kashmir issue, how close we came. So, except, except, why go to Kusuri? Ufa this July failed to mention Kashmir. Ashraf Ghazi, one of your more distinguished Pakistan High Commissioners in India, said that was a goof-up, it was a disaster, and Nawaz Sharif was left embarrassed, Sardar Aziz was literally twisting in the wind at press conferences to try to explain it. This time, when Kashmir is being treated differentially to terror, could that create a problem in Pakistan? It's clearly not going to create a problem in India, but could it create a problem in your country? Would someone like you, for instance, seek to embarrass Nawaz on that? It's not, look, I don't want to embarrass Nawaz or anyone when it comes to talks with India and getting closer, decreasing hostilities. I mean, any sensible person w would, uh, would want things to be peaceful in Pakistan because what we've been through in the last 10 years, uh, you know, the country has been through hell. So your position so, is this is so, not an issue to make a point over? Uh, not to make a point over, but at the same time, unless Kashmir has resolved, I'm afraid we will never have lasting peace. And therefore, I come back to the point. Leaders are those who have a vision, a much, much larger vision, and they mobilize public opinion to, towards that vision. So in my opinion, the dividends of peace are so enormous that any hurdles in the way, like Kashmir, which is, a main issue, which, which is the main issue, they have to be resolved. And from Khushid Kusuri's book, and of course, Shah Mahmood Qureshi was with me, 
The, the, the talks were in a very advanced stage about Kashmir. Well, but just, so just, 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 just on that, I should point out for the sake of the audience that Kasuri's view about how close things came is not necessarily the view of Indians who worked closely on that subject. But leave that aside. <laughs> yeah, Le but let me ask you, know, you this. Again, here, let again, me ask you this. Not You're everyone saying, wants to divulge what happened because these were obviously back channel talks. But let me put it like this. You're saying Kashmir, from your point of view, is the main issue. I want to ask you, how do you as an opposition leader in Pakistan view Kashmir, is it the core issue as Nawaz Sharif sees it? Or do you believe it's one of many issues, but not the core one? No, it is. Uh, the moment Kashmir issue is solved, Karan, I can tell you that everything else will fall into place. Because everyone will understand the benefits of trade. Look, there's China on one side, there's a China economic uh, uh, corridor to, to Gwadar, this, 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 this link now. The opportunities are so huge for both India, for Pakistan. So it would be madness to be held hostage to an issue which can be solved. So in your eyes, Kashmir is the core issue, it is the key yes. problem. Yes, it is. Then as a politician who hopes one day to be prime minister, what do you think is the best way the two countries should handle this issue? Because after all, it has bedeviled relations right from 47 till today. Uh, well, confidence building measures, you start first uh, you know, decreasing the tensions, and then how? Uh, for a start, stop the rhetoric. You know this, this. Uh, uh, you know the rhetoric of which which was going on in the past six months. You know, blaming each other for terror. Pakistan blaming India for terror in Balochistan and tribal area in Karachi. India blaming Pakistan for terror whenever anything happens here. So therefore, understanding. You know, terrorism problem for both the countries. Pakistan is the biggest sufferer. So get together and resolve this issue. And by the way, things have really moved fast in Pakistan from, for, for the past one year. Which things are you talking about? Uh, dealing with terror. But that's only Pakistan Taliban. You're talking about Zarbe Azb. The terror that's not tackled as far as India is concerned is the terror that the LET and Jaish unleash on this country. I know that in the joint statement, Pakistan has promised to take effective steps on the Mumbai case, but Zakir Rahman Lakhmi is on bail. No attempt has been made to rearrest him. The cases are languishing. They've been carrying on for eight years. The judge has changed six or seven times. The courts have changed two or three times. So, you know, that key issue <coughs> hangs in the air unresolved. Karan, let me, let me just again say that since one year, things have changed. How? First time all the political parties came uh, together in all parties conference. They passed what everyone endorsed what was called the National Action Plan. First time in the history of Pakistan, uh, all the parties resolved that all armed militias will be disarmed in Pakistan. First time. It's never happened before. And it's led to Zarb e Azab. No, 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 no. Impact not just... is on Waziristan and Pakistan Taliban. There's no impact on LET, Jaish, and those inflicting terror on India. No. That's the key issue no. that Mr. Modi keeps raising. No, but Karen, let me again repeat. Zarb e Azab had already started when this, or this uh, army public school incident happened and all the parties came together. It had started six months earlier, Zarb e Azab. This, uh, this national action plan specifically said that no armed militias will be allowed to operate in Pakistan. Pakistan would not be allowed, Pakistani soil will not be allowed for any uh, terrorism outside the country. So all the parties resolved, every party signed this document. And since then, there's not, there's not just been action, Zerbi Azab has gone, gone on, but in Karachi there's been an action now. Militants, Karachi is a much more peaceful city. Um, and then the sectarian groups have been targeted. But LET hasn't been two terror attacks this year. I'm talking about Gurdaspur and Udhampur. A Pakistani terrorist actually captured by the Indian forces in one of them. Hafiz Saeed continues a free man. I know that now Pakistan television no longer shows his rallies live. But there's a 10 million bounty on his head by, put by the United States. From time to time he issues blood curdling threats against India. He remains free. So when you talk mm. about steps that can be taken, I ask you again, if on that terror issue they aren't, Will we ever get close to each other? Well, uh, Karan, again, I repeat, look, I can only say that this is a document which has been signed, endorsed by all the parties and the army military leadership. We were all, the army chief and the entire political party spectrum was there. And all of us signed this document uh, uh, for the first time, disarming all militias 
That, no in, militias. that includes LET. Every every armed militia. It's a document signed by the, all, all the political parties. Except action against LET is still to be taken. Well, they, you know, there are other, uh, still militant groups roaming around in Pakistan, but they, you know, gradually would action you, is being taken. Would Imran no. Khan support action <coughs> against Hafiz Saeed, arresting uh, him, detaining him, ensuring that he doesn't come up with these periodic threats against India? Karan, don't put me on the spot about any militant group because, listen, you know, life is difficult in Pakistan. You can't just, uh, it's very easy to sit in Delhi and, could, you know, make statements. But actually in Pakistan, I've been one of the, uh, the Ministry of Interior issued this thing. I was on the top three hit list. So I'm not going to talk about militant groups. I'm just giving a statement that as far as the Pakistan uh, po political spectrum is concerned, the government, the army, all were on board that we, there should be no armed militias in Pakistan. And so, you know, it, steps are being taken. The army at the moment is very popular simply because, for the first time, there's an across-the-board clampdown on terrorism. Let me then ask you this. You're confident the steps have been taken. You're saying to me that after domestic terrorists tackled, LET will be tackled. Give Pakistan and the army time and space to do it. Do you believe that what began in Bangkok what's reached some sort of hopeful outcome in Islamabad just two days ago can actually lead to a genuine change in the atmosphere and relationship? Or is this just a hope which, like many previous hopes, will remain unfulfilled? Uh, again, a lot depends on the leadership, but this is a good beginning. And I do believe, uh, you know, that the moment people realize, and that's why people-to-people -people contact is important, that's why test series is important, cricket ties There's are There's a third thing that's important, and I'm coming back to it, not just the leadership, not just people-to-people -people contact, but also the leadership needs support from its opposition. It's not just Shireen Mazari who's criticized this joint statement, Fazlur Rahman has done so. And there are others that are being cited in your papers today, unfortunately here in India, so you don't know, but they've been doing it. Would you, when you go back, say to them, because they're opposition leaders like you, look, give it a chance. Uh, Don't criticize before anything's even happened. Uh, but, Karan, listen, I mean, opposition is meant to criticize, but no one is discouraging the talks. I mean, opposition, the whole idea of an opposition is to keep the government on its toes. And so, but the opposition is not against talks, even Fazal Rahman. And let me tell you about Fazal Rahman. He is a coalition partner of the government, of Nawaz Sharif's government. But you know, it's not just the opposition in Pakistan. The opposition in India has been accusing Mr. Modi of betrayal. They can't understand why Mr. Modi has changed his position between Ufar and now. And so you talk about the need for leadership to stand tall, but opposition in both countries is doing identical things, which is to try and cut the ground from under any initiatives the Prime Ministers take. Uh, look, uh, Karan, I'm here. I had the, you know, uh, from uh, the voting point of view, the second biggest party in Pakistan. Uh, I'm here and talking about peace, dialogue, talks, moving forward. There will always be hiccups. But my point is that when I talk about leadership, leadership always shows the bigger picture. Look, Karan, let me complete this. Leadership shows the bigger picture. The bigger picture in the subcontinent is the dividends of peace. Now, if, if a leadership in Pakistan and India, and it can only happen when both of them are on the same page, if they can, if they can tell, show the picture, the dream of open borders between India and Pakistan after having resolving our differences, the, the, the benefits of trade, the impact on poverty, I'm, I, I can tell you that they will carry everyone with them. No opposition will be able to stand up to this there's, dream. There, there's no doubt that the vision you're sketching out as a vision is beguiling, and a lot of it hinges on what you call the benefits of trade. You've even talked about how trade needs to be, in fact, the factor that boosts the relationship because it creates common dependence and therefore fosters common trust. And the like problem, it, the like problem, Imran Khan, is that in fact your country is the slow one on trade. You are reluctant to give India most favored nation status, even something reduced, like non-discriminatory market access, which was promised for December last year, hasn't happened. It's Pakistan's reluctance that holds back the trade relationship. Karan, it's, this is not true because Pakistan has a co completely different point of view. If you speak to the Pakistani traders, they say they're all these uh, uh, red tapism and all the hurdles on the way of free trade. So, I mean, but look, all this can be resolved. Point is, if we can all come, first of all, can people of Pakistan and India come to a common vision that, look, the benefits of, of, of trade, of peace, 
far outweigh any other hurdles in the way. So we can then remove all the roadblocks. But it has to be a common vision. Unfortunately, uh, we do not have the leadership which stumbles on the way, this gets stuck at a roadblock. They are not focused. The reason why people succeed is because they are focused on that vision. Then can I ask you a last question on this subject before I switch and mm. talk to you about Pakistan's internal politics? When you meet Mr. Modi later this evening, will you say to him, regardless of the fact I'm an opposition politician and my job in Pakistan is to criticize the government and check them, nonetheless on this issue, I support my government and I support you and I wish you good luck. Will you say uh, that? Uh, but Karan, I have been coming to India what, as a politician for 15 years. I have never changed my stance. I've, I have always believed long before I actually even came to politics. When I used to be playing cricket here, I still always thought that the only option was peace between the two countries. And will you say the same thing in similar tones when you go back to Nawaz Sharif? I'm your opposition leader. Shireen Mazari, my spokesperson, may have criticized you. But on the question of making peace and following a sensible policy with India, I support you. Yes, Karan, I will. You mean it? Of course. Imran Khan, <laughs> a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure.